like to share some thoughts at the Lord's table today about the grave and the barren womb. <clears throat> there in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve sinned, <clears throat> Eve, you know, was the, the first human to sin and she was the first one to be cursed. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And then to Adam the curse, he, Adam was also cursed. The Lord said, In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. As the Lord said to them, ye shall surely die in the day that ye eat of the fruit of the tree. <clears throat> so Eve was the first to sin, the first to be cursed, but she was also the first to receive a promise. The same words that were a curse to the serpent were a promise to Eve. <clears throat> and from that point on, all of Adam's offspring were born under the reign of death, and they all went down to the grave. Solomon said there are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things say not it is enough. The grave, the barren womb, the earth that is not filled with water, and the fire that saith not it is enough. <clears throat> the serpent sought to destroy all the seed of the woman <clears throat> by death, by means of death, but he especially sought to stop this promised seed of Eve from coming into the world. And this same seed was promised to Abraham and Sarah. <clears throat> he would be the seed of the woman and the seed of Abraham. And the wives of all three of the patriarchs were barren, Sarah and Rebekah and Rachel, in addition to Hannah, Samuel's mother, Manoah's wife, who was Samson's mother, so at the same time, the serpent was causing men to go down to the grave. He was also trying his best to prevent life from the womb. <clears throat> the Lord, though all throughout this time, was demonstrating that he could bring life according to his own good will and purpose. <clears throat> I like this statement that the angel of the Lord said to Hannah, or I'm sorry, this is uh, Samson's mother, the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now picture that being, saying, being spoken to the grave. Now Hannah said, Talk no more exceedingly proud. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty men are broken, they that stumbled are girded with strength. They that were full have hired themselves out for bread. And they that were hungry ceased, so that the barren hath borne seven. And she that hath many children is waxed feeble. <clears throat> the Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave, and he bringeth up. And Isaac and Jacob... The twelve tribes of Israel, Samuel and Samson, are all proof that God can bring forth life out of seemingly impossible Amen. circumstances. The serpent tried unsuccessfully to snuff out the Lord Jesus after he was born. And seeing that he was unsuccessful at his birth, he continued to try to take his life and send Jesus to the grave along with every other man. <clears throat> But it's as if the Lord said to the grave the same thing that he said to Samson's mother, Behold, now thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. And think also of Abraham, 
Paul records there in the Romans that Abraham considered not his own body, which was dead, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. So here from a, the body, the, the body of a, well, let me say it this way, from Abraham's dead body and from Sarah's dead womb came life, came the seed of promise. How God's going to do the same thing at the cross with Christ. <clears throat> and we declare unto you the glad tidings, how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, God hath fulfilled unto us their children, in that he hath raised up Jesus again, as it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. That's at his resurrection from the dead, when he said, This day I have begotten thee. From the grave. So God had been demonstrating this all along. Out of the womb of the cursed woman, Eve came every living thing. Or that's what Adam named her Eve because she was the mother of every living thing. The woman that God cursed. She wasn't, her womb wasn't barren, but she was spiritually barren. Out of the dead wombs of Sarah and Rebekah and Rachel came nations and kings. Out of the womb of death itself, God has raised his king and set him on his holy hill of Zion. <clears throat> and from Jesus, who is the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of kings of, of the earth. Now we were also begotten of God in that same place that Jesus was when we were dead. We were baptized into his death and buried with him by baptism into death. Christ... <clears throat> Like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So Jesus has thoroughly destroyed the works of the devil, which were sin and the grave. Jesus atoned for sin, and he's the first begotten from the dead. So in the end, nothing that the devil has done is going to survive. Sins are already gone. And soon death will be swallowed up of life when every single man that has ever died will raise again from the grave. So in this, incor so in this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory. O death where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? God can make new life come out of that grave. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. We thank you, Father, because we know this means that our sins are indeed forgiven and atoned for. And we know that he has been seated at your right hand to reign over all things. So at this table, we want to remember our Savior who took our sins with him to the grave. And you raised him up again to be our great high priest. And we pray that you would bless us as we magnify him and remember his works. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <clears throat>